Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 18 of season 2 of The Flash called Versus Zoom. And here we get a detailed origin of Hunter Zolomon, very different from the comics. But this is pretty clearly done to really sort of highlight the idea that if he hadn't had people like Joe and Iris in his life, Barry could have gone down a very, very dark path. And, I mean, it's an interesting case to make how much you buy into it that's that's going to kind of depend on you um the main thing with this episode is they kind of explain like okay here's how zoom was able to kill jay and this seems like the probably the biggest ass pull this show has ever tried to get it to go with and it seems to just completely fly in the face of the rules we've had established for time remnants before i mean it makes no damn sense whatsoever so, you know, part of me is hoping that it's going to turn out that Zoom was lying and that there's something more going on here because, oh, and I really get the impression that not everything Zoom might have said was the truth. I mean, there's just a more than a little bit of weirdness going on here. But it does uh, highlight some interesting points, particularly where Barry says, you know, if you had just asked us for help, we would have helped you. And, it, you know, it says a lot about Zoom that, that would never even cross his mind to ask for help. And But, of course, it has been established that he wants to be the only speedster in any world. He He's not big on sharing. <clears throat> uh, now, I did like how they did manage to more or less defeat Zoom, at least temporarily. Um, Boy, it sure was convenient that Earth 2 Harrison Wells had all the images they needed of Hunter Zolomon's parents in order to sort of make that trap work. I mean, I know we kind of mentioned like a podcast, which I'm guessing was more like a, more of a multimedia thing, but still it's like, well, it's super convenient. You happen to have all of that information right there in your wrist. I guess he was following the case or something. I mean, wow. I don't know, maybe the, this is the Earth 2 version of, you know, making a murderer or something. And, you know, Harrison Wells had some stuff from his Netflix account stored on that watch. Or something. I don't know. Stupid. And then, of course, Barry, uh, after they do manage to, you know, pin down Zoom, takes the time to gloat, more or less. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. That's what he was doing. And, of course, Zoom uses that time to escape. Points of the show, however, for finally catching up and dealing with the, hey, where does the Supergirl episode fit in? Although, a little disappointing that it wasn't even acknowledged in any really significant way other than brief Barry being briefly disorientated about how long he was away. But, okay, you know, when they do the crossover next year, I'm sure they'll get into much more detail. So I, I can let that slide. Because, you know, you, you, you do want to not waste uh, any episode time in this episode with stuff that isn't super relevant to what's immediately go immediately going on. Um, so let's just kind of have, uh, let me step away from Zoom for a minute, and um, they do nice some nice stuff with Wally here in this episode. I mean, uh, you know, Wally moves in with Joe, and he's, I do like how it takes Barry to point out, like, dude, Barry, Wally wants you to ask him to move in. I mean, we even hear Wally call Joe dad for what I think might be the first time this episode showing that those two have genuinely made some progress in their relationship. And it was nice to see Joe, like, hey, like fixing up the room and kind of laying a few basic, very reasonable ground rules down for for Wally. And then this sort of floats the question, well, where they kind of mention, like, well, hmm, I wonder what Earth 2 Wally is like. Hmm. Well, gee, I kind of, I'd be very surprised if that wasn't going to become relevant very soon, so we'll see. And then, of course, Wally gets kidnapped by Zoom, and while he never sees Barry unmasked, he does see Joe at Star Labs. And Zoom even tells him, someone you care about is someone the Flash cares about. Or someone who cares about you is someone that the Flash cares about. And obviously he's talking about Joe. So Wally is unquestionably going to be demanding some answers about all this going on, and uh, Joe is probably going to be his number one person to go to. And I definitely like that little conversation between Joe and Harry, where they sort of talk about trying to, how, how they're going to deal with that. And ultimately ends in, like, Joe saying, like, to Harry, like, hey, I want 
want you to go with them. I want you to help fight Zoom. And Harry's like, yeah, okay, he does. I don't, I don't really want to do this, but he does stand a better chance if I'm helping him. So that's that's some nice stuff there. And it was definitely very cool to see Harry be able to promise Zoom, like, man, one of these days I'm going to knock that smug smile off your face. And man, you don't give somebody like Tom Cavanaugh a line like that and not set things up for him to be able to live up to that. So, yeah. As bad as Zoom is, I really think Harry does have the greater claim to be the one to ultimately take him down than Barry does. Uh, you know, like I wonder if it's not going to be like a little bit of a situation like on Arrow back in season two, where it was really in a funny sort of way ultimately Felicity who took down Slade. But I, I guess we'll see. And remember, last episode, last season, it was ultimately Eddie that defeated uh, Reverse Flash. So. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, speaking of side characters and stuff, we have this uh, little interesting conversation between Caitlin and Iris talking about, you know, Barry and Destiny and all of that. And I wasn't the hugest fan of this. I kind of like the idea that the future is mutable, that things are changeable, that anything could still happen, that it's not written in stone. Now, of course, as comic fans, we know that ultimately, yes, Barry and Iris are still going to get together. Barry is going to go and, you know, one day help found the Justice League and probably be a part of this world's version of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it's going to be really badass and cool. But, you know, if we kind of go that way, you have to be very careful not to, to sort of seal off other possibilities. I mean, if they'd kind of jumped on that bandwagon too early, we never would have gotten Patty Spivet. Uh, the editor guy that Iris is hanging out with and had, seems to have a bit of a thing for, well, we haven't really you know, had a chance to really get attached to him as a character, but he does, again, have that potential. And, you know, it's been said, the dance of courtship never gets old. And that's why you can do season after season of TV shows with the whole will they or won't they thing. Now, granted, there's a limit to everything. And sometimes you have to just know when to go with it. Uh, if it if it drags out too long, it's just going to start seeming ridiculous to people. On the other hand, if characters do get together, well, that's been the death of more than one TV show. I think like what was that, Moonlighting, or was it Remington Steel or something? I think it might have been Moonlighting, as a show that was very famous for, okay, we got the main male and female character together, and boom the show's quality just went straight in the toilet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Moonlighting. It's a TV show where Bruce Willis really kind of got his big start. Kind of weird to think of Bruce Willis as a TV guy. But anyway, uh, getting back into this episode, though. Um, I did like that, uh, the whole scene where Zoom just sort of struggles in, struggles in there after he's gotten uh, returned Wally and all that stuff. He's like, oh, yeah. All right, I'm the man. And I do like that, that they take the time to sort of say to him, hey, who's the guy in the iron mask? And he's just like, eh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Now, I know some people are out there kind of really upset that apparently they've just taken the whole idea of Jay Garrick from the comics, you know, a venerable elder superhero, mentor to a lot of other heroes out there, and apparently just turned him into a straight-up villain. Or basically said, like, no, Jay Garrick was nothing but an alias. It's always been Hunter's Alley. I don't think the show's going to do that. One, again, Jay Garrick is a very venerable character in the Flash mythos, and they're not going to do something like that. I have a feeling that one way or another, there's going to turn out to be a real Jay Garrick somewhere, because well, where did Hunter Zolomon get that name? If it's just like, oh, I just picked that name out of thin air. No. And whatever happens, the idea of leaving Earth 2 without a Flash is just not going to seem right. And the I and especially this whole thing was like Hunter Zalman was also the Flash and he did all of this stuff to give people hope and it's just like that's extraordinarily convoluted. I I think he's bullshitting there. But in any case, uh, you know, they drain the speed, they give it to Zoom, and he just full on freaks out. I mean, uh, Cisco bringing up the dark side, and we'll talk about Cisco in a minute. Very fitting uh, thing for this episode. And uh, then there's this whole like, yeah, I got all his powers. Well, yeah, yeah I'm just gonna kill Wally just for the hell, Barry just for the hell of it. And of course, Caitlin begs him to stop. And this does seem to get through to him. And I really wish that they hadn't. They found some other way to do this. 
because it's just sort of like Jay thinks Barry Hunter thinks you're hot, so he's gonna do this. It's like, really, really, you can't find something better to do. And then she gets kidnapped at the end. It's like, ah, come on. I think I think Caitlin kind of deserved a little bit better as a character there. But all right, all right. So, of course, we know that, you know, Barry has lost his speed before. We all know he's going to get it back. I mean, we've seen the flash forward to the future uh, on Arrow where he pays a visit to Oliver and kind of mentions he was dealing with Zoom. So we know we know how this is going to play out to some degree in the future. But, yeah, uh, I wasn't too terribly satisfied with that there. But anyway, uh, speaking of Cisco, I really liked that conversation that he had with Barry. Um Although Cisco, as a Star Wars nerd, bringing up midichlorians, man, that did not ring true. Okay, most like I know very few Star Wars fans who actually like the idea of midichlorians. It's just, it's very much a yeah f f midichlorians. Let's just forget all about that. Pretend it didn't happen. But his whole and continuing Star Wars analogy, comparing himself to Reverb and being like. I'm worried I might turn into him. And again, using the whole uh, what was that Empire Strikes Back thing with the, the cave on Dagobah metaphor. And I love that Barry just completely rolls with it. He's like, oh yeah, man, I totally get what you're talking about. It, this makes perfect sense to me. And then he goes and says, like, look, man, you realize I've been terrified of what I could have become every time I gain a new power. But you know what? You're not Reverb. You have us. You have your friends. We're going to be here for you to make sure you don't turn into that guy. Also points to Cisco for calling uh, Reverb out on wearing guy liner. <laughs> that that was oddly hilarious to me. Um, yeah, and uh, again, Cisco's development of these abilities. Hmm, you know, if we're ever gonna do that, if we're gonna do when we do that Supergirl crossover next year, I have a feeling this might be a factor. And again, this opens up the multiverse even further. So. There's just so many possibilities of where they could go with this now. I mean, Earth 3, Crime Syndicate. Um, we've already seen a little bit of a nod to the Legion of Superheroes. Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, I mean, the possibilities are really just endless. And it was interesting that when Cisco tuned into Zoom to tell him, like, okay, okay, Barry agrees to your deal. Zoom refers to him as Vibe. Hmm. I don't think Cisco's officially started to call himself Vibe. So we know Zoom can time travel. Has he been to the future and seen something? Okay, that, that's all I really got for this episode. I mean, it definitely had some serious flaws, but it sets things up in a really interesting way for the next episode and definitely for the rest of the season. So with that said, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. And also, please join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.